Hare Krishna. <coughs> so today <coughs> um, we shall start a new uh, seminar and it is on next nectar of instruction from Rupa Goswami or Upadeshamrita. Um, Upadeshamrita is a scripture written for uh, representing the whole path of spiritual journey <clears throat> from very beginning to the very end of spiritual perfection and um, it is extremely astonishing book in 11 verses Rupa Goswami describes the whole philosophy <laughs> it's astonishing <clears throat> how can uh, describe someone so eloquently in so congested form uh, the whole path of spiritual perfection from beginning to the end and <clears throat> uh, at the beginning um, Rupa Goswami uh, he describes six urges of the body um, that every sadhaka should avoid or um, go beyond them if he or she wants to uh, enter the path of devotional service. It is described by our charyas that uh, if we are slaves to these urges, we cannot, we are not even qualified to begin bhakti. <laughs> so, uh, the first first is uh, Vacha Vegam, Manasa Hroda Vegam, Jikva Vegam, Uttara Pasta Vegam, Etan Vegan Yavishikita Dirada, Sarvama Pimam, Pritivim Sashishyat. That uh, Vacha Vegam means the urge of speech. Mm, everyone is inclined to speak, um, more or less. <laughs> If one is extrovert, is so much more inclined to speak. <laughs> if someone is introvert, he may be uh, speaking less outwardly, but he may be uh, speaking to himself a lot. Shri Panchatatva Ki Jai Nitai Gaur Paramanandi Yes, uh, if someone doesn't speak out, outside, on the outside, with other people, he may be speaking to himself a lot. Yes, so <clears throat> it's urge to speak. And why do we speak at all? What do you think? Sorry? Communication, yes, this is another word for for speaking. Yes, um, actually, speaking is to interact with other world around us. <coughs> uh, it's an urge to connect. Isn't it? Uh, to connect with Absolute, actually. Um, we, by definition, are not independent. We are dependent Shakti. Tatashta Shakti is always dependent. It's not independent. So, <clears throat> we want to connect with the Absolute. But as long as we are conditioned, Mm, this concept of absolute or God is abstract. So we connect, we try to connect with those who surround us. 
yes, with this world which surrounds us. Um, so, and speech, of course, is <coughs> one of the main um, means to connect. All the senses do the same, actually. They interact with the world outside of us uh, to connect and to interact, uh, to, to make bondage. <laughs> Yes, with things outside of us. Yes. So it's important that we know that these urges of the body, uh, which are natural, they are quite natural, they are Krishna given, are meant uh, for uh, connection. And this connection is called yoga in Sanskrit. Uh, so. <clears throat> Our speech should be used for satisfaction of Krishna. Or, uh, yes, uh, as a means that it can um, connect us with Krishna. For this ultimate yoga, yoga with Krishna, with the, with the Supreme, with Absolute. Otherwise, we will just create bondage with material world, material surroundings. And we don't want this. <laughs> At least I assume that we don't want this. Vachovigam, <laughs> yes. Um, and we express different things with our words, either love or hate. And uh, it, it, it is two different sides of the same coin. Raga and Dvesha. Uh, I believe we already explained from uh, where this Raga and Dvesha come. Uh, because we are in ignorance, as long as conditioned soul is in ignorance, uh, it identifies with something that she's not or he's not. Mm. Asmita is called. Asmi. Asmi means I am. So uh, I'm this, I'm that. I'm a woman, I'm a man, I'm a human being, I'm an animal. I'm young, I'm old. I'm student, I'm teacher. I'm Christian, Muslim, Hare Krishna. Different identifications, unlimited identifications we have. Yes, this is Asmita. And because we create our world um, with this, on this basis of Asmi, I'm this, I'm that. Um, and this, of course, is not just our body, but all our surroundings, my wife, my family, my children, my language, my culture, my uh, village or town, my, mm, mm, I don't know, my school, my uh, football club, <laughs> my favorite music, and this and that. Unlimited identifications. Yes, and I consider what is I and mine uh, to be my world that I should protect. It is my existence. And since I want to exist eternally, it's my nature to exist eternally, I want to protect this. And I'm attached, this is Raga, to things that I believe that support my existence. And I hate everything that I fear that might uh, endanger my existence. Yes. And because of this raga and vesha comes abhini vesha, deep absorption in material consciousness. Uh, and therefore, fear of losing our existence. Fear, deep fear. Yes. 
So fear is constant companion of the living entity. Either man or human being or um, animal, even insect. We, we can see if we just approach an insect, uh, it flees, isn't it? Yes, and uh, have you seen a deer, how they graze uh, in the grass? You seen? Yes. Uh, I'm living in the countryside and, I, and of course you also <laughs> live in the countryside, so uh, is there a lot of deer here? Yes, <clears throat> you can see how they, uh, they graze. They, for a moment or two, they graze, but then they look around, what's going on. <laughs> they check if everything is safe. safe. Uh, they're always afraid. Fear is constant companion of the living entity. And also a human being is always afraid, always afraid for losing his existence. So, yes, um, an example of this speech, um, we have many examples in scriptures also. Mm. Gopis, they describe uh, the flute, <laughs> Krishna, how Krishna is playing the flute, uh, flute. Uh, this whole chapter of it. And they describe how Krishna goes to the pasture ground in the forest and every, everyone is attracted to his flute playing. <laughs> yes. Um, so many descriptions of speaking. Yes. So we should use our speech, this is my point, um, to elevate ourselves, not to degrade ourselves. So uh, elevation means to connect, to create yoga with Krishna. And degradation means to uh, make our consciousness separate from Krishna. This is called um, Pritak Bhava. Pritak means to uh, separate. And Bhava means existence. Pritak Bhava means separate existence from the Lord. Yes. So we shouldn't have Pritak Bhava. As, as soon as we have this Pritak Bhava, we don't see connection with the Lord in everything. Uh, fear comes into our heart. Immediately. So um, we can check our heart, examine the depths of our heart if there is any fear uh, in our heart. What will happen to me? Yes. <laughs> How the next day will it be? How will I, will I survive? and so on and so forth. Uh, many fears, unlimited fears. Yes. Will I be taken care of? <laughs> yes. So, um, you should create yoga, not Pritak Bhava, with, with speech. And then it is Kroda, Vajravigam, mm. Manasa, Manasa, before Kroda is the mind. The mind, as we know from sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains, uh, mm, that mind, uh, if uncontrolled, is our worst enemy. And if we are able to control our mind, uh, it can become uh, uh, our friend. But it is not an ordinary friend. 
ordinary friend can be trusted, isn't it? <laughs> but mind can never be trusted. Shukadeva Goswami explains in fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, Nakuryat Karhichit Sakyam Manasih Yanavasiti, Yet Vishambar Shirat Shirnam, Chaskanda Tapa Ishwaram. Never make friends with the mind. <laughs> Never. It can destroy even great personalities. Yes. And it happened many times that even great personalities were defeated, destroyed by the power of mind. And then he, he next uh, next words he explains Nityam Dadati Kamasya Chidram Tanamuriha Yogina Krita Maitrasya Patyurja Yiva Pumshali that if one trusts the mind he's like a foolish husband who is of of the prostitute. <laughs> if if the husband who is married to a prostitute trusts his wife, he'll be cheated, definitely. And as Prabhupada translates, not just cheated, he'll be killed by her lovers. <laughs> so, and nityam dadati kamasya, says Shukadeva Goswami, that mind always gives rise to lust. Lust is <coughs> not just desire for sexual pleasure, but karma means actually the desire for for bodily pleasure. What kind, whatever kind of bodily pleasure, is lust. Is lust. Yes. So nityam dadati kamasya. We should know that this urges are um, designed as long uh, along with the senses are designed for our uh, material existence yes they help conditioned living entity to survive in this world so they are designed to um, for, for living in material world and for surviving in material world. Um, they're designed to, to help us to struggle in a better way than other living entities <laughs> for our existence. Yes. Ahastani sahastanama padana chirtushpatam falguni tatra mahatam jivo jivasya jivana. Strong, one stronger living entity lives on expense of the weaker living entity. Yes. This is this world. is uh, a cruel world. Yes. So our senses are designed in this way. And especially mind. The mind which controls the senses. The mind is controller of the senses. So it is created to um, to support our existence. Everything is created in this way to support our existence because we want to be eternal. But as long as we identify with material body, we try to protect this material existence. Yes. So the mind is created in this way. And therefore, uh, because we want to be happy, it's our nature to be ananda mayobya sat, to be always happy. Um, the mind creates ideas how to achieve perfect happiness in material existence. Yes. And the mind believes if the senses will be satisfied then we can be satisfied <laughs> because we identify with these senses aren't we yes we identify with the senses 
because there are the, the, the essence of our material existence. Through these senses we can, we can experience everything. Yes. Mm. So if one is deprived of the senses, uh, it's great handicap. For example, if one is deaf and blind, <laughs> it's it's great handicap, yes. and we pity such a person. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so, um, our mind, therefore, should be trained to focus on Krishna, and Krishna um, emphasizes this time and time again in Bhagavad Gita. Mm. He, uh, when he explains yam yam vapismaram bhavanti ajanti anti kalivaram tam tamaviti kaunta sadatat bhava bhavita that whatever state of consciousness one has at the time of death that state of being will, we will achieve undoubtedly without any doubt and um, this is extremely important for us to understand that yes we should be in spiritual consciousness now because death itself cannot change our consciousness and then because Krishna understands this he says uh, tasmat tasmat means therefore I established something and therefore listen to this <laughs> tasmat sarveshu kaleshu mama nusmara yudhyacha may arpita manubudir Tasmat Sarveshu Kalishu. Therefore, at all times, Sarveshu Kalishu, Mama Nusmara, remember me, Yudhyacha, and fight. Of course, this was his duty. So we should, Sarveshu Kalishu, remember Krishna, remember Krishna at all times, and do our duties. Tasmat Sarveshu Kaleshu Mama Nusmara Yudhicha Mayar Pitamano Budir Engage your mind and intelligence in me and thus you will achieve me without doubt yes. but because this is of course Samadhi actually if we can remember Krishna at all times therefore he says Abhyasa yoga yukta na chita se nana gamina. Paraman purushan divyam yati parta na chita. Engage yourself in abhyasa yoga, in training of your consciousness. And this is what, is what we do. We are training our consciousness. It's like a military drill. Mm. Army uh, undergoes drill that something becomes natural. Just one command and everyone jumps. <laughs> Isn't it? This is military drill. So we should drill our consciousness uh, to remember Krishna. Yes. And this is achieved by, by uh, regular uh, and deep sadhana. Bhakti, by regular chanting of the holy name. This is drill of our consciousness. Yes, Abhyasa Yoga. We should uh, drill our consciousness very thoroughly. Yes. And so it's so important to go deep in our sadhana, deep in our chanting. It's not enough that just we just finish our rounds. I put so much stress on this because it's crucial for our spiritual survival. Because if we just want to finish our rounds, then what we will achieve? We will achieve that they will be finished. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> that's it. We will not connect with shallow consciousness so we should go deep in our relationship with Krishna 
but we cannot go artificially. We should crave for this, uh, have deep desire, but with shallow performance of our, of our sadhana, we cannot go deep. We cannot crave for this. And we'll just try to tick what I have done this day. I have read so much. I have chanted my rounds. <laughs> yes. Um, so we should give all distractions away and just chant the holy name. Go away the, our phones, not to speak to anyone, not to see anything or read anything. We can see, the, we can look at the picture of Krishna. <laughs> that can help us chanting. Yes. But all other distractions should be removed. Especially the phone is the ultimate distractor of, of modern times. Yes. So we should be very careful uh, to to stay away of this um, personified Kali. <laughs> yes, um, this is Mana, Manasa, and then it's Kroda. Kroda is very powerful, and it is expression of. Um, our conditioned state that we are not the Lord it's, it's the proof that we are, that we are uh, servants <laughs> why? because Kroda comes into play when we don't have the power over circ either circumstances or other people yes if you would have control over other world, there would be no need for our anger because everyone would play according to our uh, uh, dance according to our tune. <laughs> Isn't it? Yes. But because they don't dance according to our tune, we become angry. So things and other people go against our will, against our expectations, and we become angry. And anger can also be expression of envy, because we are not absolutely the best, <laughs> like Krishna is. We are envious of others, who can have better or, or even if they have similar abilities as we, we have. We become envious because then he's my rival or she's my rival. <laughs> yes, this envy is really deep and Bhaktivinoda Thakur uh, has sung many times uh, how this envy permeates his heart and that he's really happy when other people are suffering and <laughs> yes uh, people say if someone uh, has really bad luck and something bad happens to them they say oh you poor guy and, but they think in their heart, yes, you deserve this. <laughs> Hare Krishna. As this envy is very powerful. Uh, so, uh, and, and of course, anger, anger. If anything goes wrong to our estimation, we become angry. And Shishupal exhibited this anger, uh, ultimate envy of Krishna. <laughs> he, he was envious from his birth. And whatever he said was just blasphemy of Krishna. Yes. Until Krishna killed him. <laughs> 
and liberated his soul. Yes. Uh, envy, envy and anger, yes. We should stay away from them. Um, Manasah Kroda Vegam. Yes, this, um, these are subtle urges. Yes. Vacha um, Vegam, Manasah Kroda Vegam. These are subtle urges. And then there are bodily urges. Jihva mm. Vegam is uh, the urge of tongue. And the tongue, uh, the speech we already described, um, the other urge of the tongue is to taste, to taste delicious food. And I said that um, because these senses are designed for material existence, uh, they want to enjoy in material existence because it's our nature to enjoy. So uh, the tongue wants wants to taste something very nice all the time, and uh, and we perceive different food according to our taste, and therefore Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Uh, mixed all prasad together <laughs> that no one would pick i like this i like that <laughs> yes because it's offensive if we look on prasad i like this i, I don't like that this is offensive because prasad is non different than krishna and if i i'm picky i don't like this uh, it's as I, I would say, I don't like Krishna. <laughs> Therefore, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati mixed everything. And you can have prasad. Uh, the idea is, and then Prabhupada put it many times, um, and it's also in, in Bhagavatam, that, jivas, uh, that um, kamasya nindriya pritir labo jiveta yavata. Jivasya tattva jigesya nartoyashtriha karma bi. This is explained in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, second chapter of the first canto. So the Goswami explains that kamasya, that means desire um, to enjoy our senses uh, or um, for, for bodily pleasure. Kamasya nindriya pritir. It's not meant. Uh, for the satisfaction of the senses. Yes, these different desires that one has, um, that one has, are not meant for for uh, pleasure of the senses. Na indriya pritir. Indriya means senses. Priti means satisfaction. Labo jivita yavata. But why are then senses there uh, that we live? <laughs> Labojivita, that we uh, survive in this world. As Prabhupada uh, put this, is to keep body and soul together. Labojivita <laughs> yavata. Jivasya tattva jikyasa. And we live not for bodily pleasures, but for tattva jikyasa, to inquire about absolute truth. And we know from this Chatur Shloki of Bhagavatam that. Um, this tattva jigyasa actually is our abhidaya. This is that, that means search for absolute truth. Our chanting, our reading, our hearing, our worshipping is just to connect with absolute truth. It's actually tattva jigyasa. Searching for the absolute truth. Like we described today how gopis were going from forest to forest and searching for Krishna. And Krishna left them during Rasa dance. Uh, so we should uh, chant in this mood, searching uh, Krishna. <laughs> Chanting and hearing and reading and uh, worshipping Krishna in this mood. Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? And who is Krishna? Yes. Um, so, 
<clears throat> we shouldn't uh, crave for tastes. For example, I uh, very much like sweets. And I, when I came here, I noticed there is no sweets. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when I came here to this place, I noticed that there is no sweets here. <laughs> Not even for the Sunday feast. <laughs> what to speak during the, uh, the weekdays. <laughs> it was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So... Uh, but it is described that we should be satisfied with whatever we get. Yes. Uh, not just food, but with everything in this life. We should be satisfied. This is uh, austerity of the mind. It is explained in 17th chapter of, of Bhagavad Gita. Austerity of the mind. Manach prasadach somyatvam. Maum nam atman vinigraha. Bhavasam Shudriti that the Po Mana Samuchati. Yes. Uh, satisfaction of the mind. This is very important. If we want to uh, to connect with Krishna, we should always be satisfied. It is described um, in some scripture, I don't know, it's Padma Purana or something, that Krishna never reveals to one who is dissatisfied. So, it's in our best interest to be always satisfied. And we all want to be satisfied all the time, isn't it? And why then there we dissatisfied? It's against our, our desire to be perfectly happy, to be blissful. So, dissatisfaction is against our interest. So we should give away, give up our dissatisfaction and be always satisfied in any circumstance. This is the art of bhakti yoga. Because we know everything comes by Krishna's mercy. So if anything doesn't come, it's also Krishna's mercy. Yes, so we should take it like this. Uh, a special Krishna's mercy, whatever we get or we don't get, <laughs> it's Krishna's mercy. Jihva uh, Vigam, Udara Pasta Vigam. Udara means the belly, so we want to eat a lot, uh, more than necessary, and to to feel satisfied. So we shouldn't eat more than necessary. Yes. Mm. And this is explained by Lord Chaitanya himself. Jihvara Lala se ye uiti utudaya shishnotara parayana krishna nahipaya That those who live for these urges of the body, of the tongue and belly and genitals, he can uh, never achieve Krishna. <laughs> so, uh, and we can examine ourselves. If we have too much fat, we have too strong urge of the belly. <laughs> yes, because we eat more than necessary. Yes, so we should be careful. Um, to avoid these urges, um, to tolerate them, actually. Because it is described by Krishna himself in fifth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Shaknoti hevayaksudun praksharira nimokshanat kama krodot bhavam vigam suyuktaksa sukinara. We can be yukta and suki, that means connected with Krishna and happy, if we can tolerate urges of the body, like lust and anger, shaknoti heva yaksudum prakshari ravi mokchanat. If we are able to tolerate before we give up our body, 
these urges of the body, we can be connected to Krishna and always happy. That means that these urges of the body will not go away, <laughs> even in liberated state. As long as one has the body, these urges will remain. Karma, Kroda, Loba, everything that is connected with the body, our urge for eating, our urge for um, bodily enjoyment, and so on, they will stay with us. Um, but we shouldn't be slaves of them. Therefore, we should become Goswami, not Godasa. Goswami means that he's the master of the senses. He doesn't kill the senses. <laughs> but he engages them in the service of the master of the senses, of Hrishikesha. Yes. Mm. Yes. Um. So if we serve Hrishikesha, the master of the senses, with the sen these senses, this is called bhakti. Yes. So these urges will remain. Don't think that if I'm if I achieve perfection. I will not feel karma or kroda and other urges. Um, but if we achieve perfection, we will not be overwhelmed by them. They will be weak. They will not be strong. They will not, uh, will not yield their power over us. Yes. Mm. But they will be under our control yes. and, and engaged in the service because they all can be engaged in the service yeah. and of course the urge of the genitals it is described by Bhaktivinoda Thakur that uh, this urge of the genitals is not just a uh, desire for uh, sexual uh, intercourse but it is also the desire to associate with the opposite sex. Um, so we should avoid association of the opposite sex. All unnecessary uh, association should be completely avoided. Yes. That doesn't mean, as we discussed the other day, that uh, we put this whole horse blinders and, and that we act immaturely. Shri Panchatatva Ki Jai Nitai Gaur Premanandi Hari Ribor that we act immaturely and and pretend that uh, the members of the opposite sex don't exist <laughs> because it's just expression of our attachment. Uh, but we shouldn't associate with them, except in uh, in some some special need, if there is some need for service. But strictly business association, uh, because it's extremely pleasure pleasurable to associate with another sex. <laughs> yes, gives great satisfaction. Uh, to the mind and senses, even if uh, we just might might say and think this is just some um, some polite dealings with one another, but it's very powerful. It's very powerful. So we shouldn't uh, associate with another sex should completely stay away. Yes. Uh, otherwise we'll be victim of of this um, most powerful force in material nature. Yes. Even if we if this desire for sex 
doesn't cross our mind. Yes. Hare Krishna. Uh, is there any question or comment? Would you like to add something? So the conclusion is that uh, we should avoid these urges of the body and mind uh, in order to to go um, in deep in our sadhana. We cannot really begin our sadhana, is explained by our charyas, without giving up this. And this verse explains only one who is perfect in, in, in uh, controlling these urges can become a guru of everyone. Yes. And bhakta or devotee of Krishna is by nature guru of the whole world. So um, we should become such a guru. Everyone should become a guru is said by, by Lord Chaitanya himself. <laughs> yes. So we should be exemplary ourselves and thus teach the world. Yes. Mm. And uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains that uh, we should not separately try to, to control these urges. We should control these urges by Sharanagati by surrender to Krishna, by taking shelter of Krishna. Yes, because Krishna himself explains, Devi Hesha Gunamayi Mama Maya Duratyaya Mam Eva Yi Prapadanti Maya Maitantarantiti that uh, my energy is completely, no one is able to, to go beyond it. It's not possible. It's Duratyaya unconquerable mam eva ye prapadanti only those who surrender unto me can cross beyond it yes. so uh, we can control these urges only by taking shelter of Krishna not separately we shouldn't try to separately uh, uh, to separately um, control these urges but just surrender to Krishna Hare Krishna. Okay. Now I, I think it's time for Gorarati. Shri Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Bhaktavrinda ki jai, Nitai Gaur Pramanandi. Please accept my humble place.